Tech again. Uh, we're going to be doing a two to three part video series on uh, clutch and flywheel replacement. The first thing we're going to want to do is get to the basics though. What I have here is all the components that you'll have in your clutch assembly, which is our clutch disc here, our friction disc. We have our pressure plate here. We have our heavy flywheel here with the ring gear installed. We have our alignment tool, dowel pin, dowel rod, whatever you want to call it. And we have our release bearing. Uh, we're going to be showing you how all this stuff kind of fits together and how it works uh, so you understand what we're doing when we actually replace the clutch and the flywheel in um, our video. The way this works basically is that, like I said, the flywheel is bolted to the engine. Okay. The pressure plate is bolted to the flywheel. So in turn, these are both bolted to the engine. Okay. So these, these two pieces here are going to be spinning as one because they're bolted together. Now what we have on this side is the clutch disc, the friction disc, which has uh, teeth that are mated to the transmission input shaft. Okay? So the friction disc is mated with the transmission and the flywheel and the pressure plate are mated with the engine. Okay? And the way this works is and I'm going to have to kind of leave this off, hanging off the side, so hopefully you could figure out how this works. Okay, because it's kind of tough to explain without a graphic animation. Is that when, when the clutch pedal is out and you're driving, there's going to be pressure pushed onto the clutch disc, okay? And it's going to push the clutch disc and sandwich it in between the pressure plate and the flywheel. So everything has now become one. You're getting the power movement from the flywheel and it's being smushed in between the flywheel and the pressure plate so the clutch can't do anything but turn at the same speed as the engine. Thus we have our one to one uh, power ratio and then the transmission changes that via gear setup. Now when we release the clutch or when we push the clutch in to shift gears, what we're doing is we're taking our release fork which is connected to the release bearing here and it's pushing on all these little fingers right here and those are spring loaded that's where you get your spring tension from the clutch when you push on these spring levers what happens is this surface sinks into the pressure plate and what that does is that releases the pressure from the clutch so now instead of the clutch being sandwiched in between the flywheel and the pressure plate where it can't move now it is free to spin freely so basically what happened is because oh, sorry let's see because we push on those springs around the edge here in in essence what happens is and this doesn't actually happen I just have to show you um, in essence the inside of the pressure plate is lifting up Okay, it doesn't. Have, this whole thing doesn't actually lift up. I'm just showing you a representation. The inside of this pressure plate lifts up, which allows the clutch disc and the inside to freewheel. Okay, so it is no longer fluidly connected to the uh, to the engine because it's not being. And then once we once we let the clutch back off again, what happens is it comes back into contact, and it puts pressure back on the clutch disc which in turn makes everything turn at one solid piece, as one solid piece, okay? So that's about as simple of an explanation I can give you on clutch procedure, how it works. Um, I'll show you a little in-depth here. So this is what we have here. This is our uh, pressure plate, spring-loaded. Okay, so when you push on these, you push in on them with the, the release fork, the inside of this moves inside moves inward, which allows the uh, the clutch pressure to be released. Or the friction pressure to be released. This is our friction uh, material right here. And like I said, it's spring loaded. Um, so when your start stops aren't as, aren't as harsh, basically, it's all riveted together on one solid piece um, that includes this spring set here. So uh, basically this can turn a slight bit before the clutch actually, the clutch friction disc actually moves. So that helps in uh, softening 
or dampening the vibrations. And then, oof, baby, there's our flywheel. So as you can see, one side, obviously, this side mounts to the engine, and this is the friction side. And there's our ring gear for the starter. The alignment dowel. That's all that, that is. And then our, uh, our release bearing, which is going to ride on the release fork. And this is what pushes on, the, uh, on those little fingers that release the pressure plate from the clutch disc. So hopefully this helped you guys. Um, you know, flywheel, clutch disc, pressure plate. When I push in on those, when I push down on those with the release fork because I'm pushing the clutch in, it's going to lift the interior diaphragm up, which allows the clutch friction disc to spin freely, not spin at all. And uh, that's how it works. Then when we let off the clutch, it's slowly let off the clutch. It's slowly putting pressure back down on the clutch uh, pressure plate or on the clutch uh, friction disc, slowly putting pressure back on until it's contacting the flywheel and they're sandwiched together and then uh, you're, you're connected. So that's all there is to it. It's been another video from Anthony at DIY Auto Tech. Thank you for, uh, thank you for subscribing and uh, please click on the advertisements. Um, it helps me to buy products to do videos for you guys like this here. I would mostly appreciate it. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned for the next video on how to install this on a front.